I've seen a lot of Eldegoss in my games, but I'm still not really sure how this Pokemon works. Like, even after reading the ability details, I'm kind of lost. So it's probably a really good thing if I get some gameplay on this Pokemon, just so I understand what it's doing and how it's doing it. So we got Cotton down, that at least makes enough sense. After taking enough damage, damages and slows the attacker, restores your hit points, and increases movement speed. So, yeah, it just kind of has, like, weird sustain off of that. Uh, I haven't noticed the clarity behind it, things just kind of happen with Aldegoss. Then we got Leafage, throws a flurry of leaves that slows opponents, and Synthesis for the heal. So, I mean, like, just basic healing on the Synthesis. But Pollen Puff is where it starts to get weird. Attaches a Pollen Puff to the Pokemon, friend or foe, allies are healed by the Pollen, but opponents are damaged by it. It just kind of, like, sticks it to them and then things happen. But allies increase defense, and opponents take damage over time. I don't really know if people use, like, Leaf Tornado on it. I think you're just, like, hyper-supporting. And then Cotton Guard. Protects you and your nearby, nearby allies with, with damage-absorbing Cotton. The Cotton restores hit points when it dissipates, and then you get more movement speed. Cotton Spore gives you damage-absorbing absor spores, then they burst to deal damage and slow nearby opponents, but displaces it on upgrade. So yeah, like, I read that, it makes sense, but then, like, Eldegoss is in my game, and it's either completely useless, or making team fights take, like, 20 years. Like, if there's two Eldegoss, one on each side of the team, team fights take, like, three times longer, and it doesn't seem like it should with just that ability detail, so... Let's get in it, let's see what happens. Okay, so I just got out of a game I wasn't really proud on with the commentary. Also, the lane assignments got kind of weird, and looks like this lane's also being a little weird as well. And it made me understand Eldegoss a bit more, but still kind of silly. So, Leafage, it's just, it just goes out. It looks like it's a line attack, but it does stop at the first enemy hit, and then slows them. So, very little, very basic stuff. Hey, there's, there's someone hanging out. Then, that just heals, like... It just, it just pops, and then it happens. So I guess that's kind of cool. Like, the, it's straightforward, but everything just kind of, like, stacks and applies over time. Now, Pollen Puff is where things get weird, and I think it's maybe the low cooldown that makes everything feel crazy, because it just sticks to someone, and then if you're around, they take damage, or you get healed. That's all there is to it. But I think it's the spamminess, and the size of the heal, and the persistence, plus everything else that goes on, that just makes everything with Eldegoss drag out. It's like, is there like, the issue is, yes, there's actually this much power inside of a couple of little abilities like it. Um, interestingly enough, like, I think if you want to get really good with Eldegoss, you can work on players where it's like, you stick yourself with the Pollen Puff, and they just, like, run up and heal or kamikaze people. Like, I think that's what's going to set, like, really good Eldegoss players from, like, bad and just inting Eldegoss players. That's also maybe why it feels like Eldegoss is completely useless sometimes. They're, like, really bad with their, uh, Pollen Puffs. But Eldegoss does seem like it gets behind in the level curve and can get slapped on. So, yeah, you need to burst it. You need to burst Eldegoss. You need to burst its teammates. You can't let it just sit around in the fight for too long. But now, we're getting close to our upgrade, so we're gonna see how the Cotton Spore works. I, I picked Cotton Down last time, and Cotton Down actually has the displacement without the upgrade, so you just start knocking people up instantly, and it's alright. I feel like there's some potential there if you can just, you know, kind of set it up on people. Yeah, I'm trying to think, like, what the uh, possibility is of lay laying this as a trap. Kinda. I think the auto-targeting is pretty acceptable on it, but if you want to be, like, super crazy, that's when you... That's when you get, like, really smart with how you cast it. Your auto attacks don't do much. You're really, like, uh, dependent on having someone for your lane. But yeah, just uh, the Pollen Puff spam. That's that's where all the power seems to be located with this Pokemon from actually just playing it. So, let's use this. And Cotton Guard is also kind of silly. So, when you activate it, everyone gets a shield around you. And then it pops and heals them. So, like, it's not like you activate it, run into them. They all have to be around you. So make sure you're using it at the right time. It's kind of like turning into a guide more than just gameplay. Because, like, this, this Pokemon's just weird. Alright, so let's do that. Let's shield. Use that shield to get a heal on top of a heal on top of Pollen Puff. I get it. <laughs> it's like, alright, alright. So, yeah, this is just, like, your upgraded synthesis. At first, I was like, why would I ever want to get rid of the synthesis if I just have a heal baked in? Nah, Pollen Puff is more healing and Cotton down, or not con down, con guard has like that utility element behind it, and it's just the spam, this spam is why fights last for so long, so I think cooldown reduction, definitely the play to make with this Pokemon, and you just, you just bully, like, it's, 
I think another thing that makes Cotton, or not Cotton, uh, Eldegoss really weird is that it doesn't feel like a traditional healer. Like, Soraka bot, or yeah, Soraka is effectively a bot. It's just a heal bot. That's all it does. And then, like, other enchanters and things like that kind of makes sense. That Frogadier was just doing some weird stuff. Um, yeah, but we can see, we can place that in a really spicy area, and that's gonna be good for, um, Lucario. Whoa, ooh, I like this because it's like a Janna ult. So your ultimate is also kind of crazy, because when you land, it displaces them in, like, a big knockback, so it's like all the healing of a Janna ult at once, while being able to run around position. So you have, like, a flash and high mobility inside of a Janna ult. But yeah, see, I missed that, because I, I should have placed it on myself. So it's kind of tricky to actually get to, like, land on yourself and then make it all work. So, even though I'm just a couple, like... Actually, this is my second game on Eldegoss. So even though I only have, like, two games of Eldegoss experience, I can see where really good Eldegoss players can just make a battle last forever. They're making sure their heals are always proccing and they're getting a little bit of displacement. Cotton Down seems really strong, but I think there is a, uh, a little bit of a niche for Cotton Spore, depending on, like... How much displacement damage you can add on top of it. So yeah, this stuff's kind of weird. I also don't know, because everything's Japanese, like, you're just doing auto-targeting. Like, I would just set the targeting to myself, mostly, and just kind of, like, chase with my allies. See? He's got a shield. He's got a heal. I don't know if I was in range for Talonflame, so he, like... I think it's a power multiplier. It's a power multiplier in, like, a, a very enchantery heal body kind of way. Because if my teammate has their own agency, they're strong. Oh, see? And then when pushing, I can't throw it on enemies. I need to be throwing it on myself or teammates. So it is, like, the targeting, I feel, is the hardest part on this Pokemon. I don't know how you can prioritize ally healing or ally targeting over enemies, but that's kind of, like, the number one thing. But if you just put Cotton... Or if you put a uh, Pollen Puff, and then you have, like, melee attackers, like Garchomp and Machamp and Lucario, then, yeah, like, they just run at them so the enemy takes damage and also gets healing, and... See, that's... That healing, like, we, we kept alive longer than we should have right there against, like, Fed Lucario and Strong Cinderace. So I'm understanding what this Pokemon is. I just don't understand what to do about it. Like, you can't burst it because it heals off of its passive. And I didn't mean to flash that. I'm just pressing buttons. And if you focus it... You know, you're focusing the support, which sometimes does and doesn't work. Like, if you don't burst the Eldegoss, you wasted all that effort. But if you don't burst the Eldegoss, then everyone on the team gets, like, a million extra health. So, yeah, see, I do that. I support it for the Garchomp. That pops. And everyone's just tankier. And now, I can get behind them, and I can push them like that. So, you can Jana ult for the heal, and then, like, kind of make the team fight weird like that. Or you can Jana ult and bring people back into the fight. That was like a weird 2v2, 1v2, 3 kind of thing. So I think there's like a lot of hidden power inside of this Pokemon. Like over the course of the battle, you eventually feel and you're like, oh, why did no one die? Because uh, Elder Gauss was just kind of able to get cooldowns going off forever. Uh, uh. And yeah, if you're running away, like you set a Pelon Puff in front of you so you can pick it up and heal maybe on you if you're trying to, like, get that timing really well. It's a weird Pokemon. I can see how when you fall behind, you're loose useless. And if, like, everyone else is doing too much damage, you don't have enough to heal. But there's, like, two Eldegoss on each team. It gets weird. I'm really liking these gameplays that I'm doing. Just, like, understanding the Pokemon a bit more. Like, oh, that's why that happens. So, yeah. The Pokemon is... Playing as intended and doing all that weird stuff. Oh, dang. Wait, no, Garchomp lived. And Cinderace died. Is this just like oh, it's also the movement speed. So yeah, using that and getting movement speed, pretty good. Oh. Oh. Cool. I put the palm puff on myself just in case a Greninja tried to get away. I would just nuke him. See, so, yeah, I think you need you need an interesting kind of skill cap, or at least motor skills. Like Having the ability to place instantly. I think this is going to be better for uh, mobile instead of switch. Like if you're just if you're just like perfect on instantly targeting and getting everything exactly where it needs to go. Yeah, this is gonna be great. Ooh, but you again you can get bursted, so you have to be aware of that. 
I didn't want to use my Unite move there because I still wanted to use my cooldowns. So it's like, blow your cooldowns, Unite move, stay invulnerable for a bit, a bit, heal and displace when you need to, and then your cooldowns are back up. And then you get another round of cooldowns, and yeah, everyone got healed, like, their entire health bar and then some. Makes sense. I think we lose, and I think I didn't play my best, but I'm just trying to get the game to play down for the Elder Gods. Did I stick him? Dumb. Like, some, like, you have highs and lows with this character. You either get, like, absolutely bursted out and feel useless, or you get to be crazy. Um, I guess as a ranged per character, I shouldn't be trying to get in the scuffle as much as I end up. So you, you gotta you gotta play very specifically. But you also have to like make sure your pollen puff is uh, being effective. Cool. I don't know what else there is to say about other goss. Like is just going to have that invisible effect on the team. Hope you guys enjoy the video, I guess. It's just weird. Actually, the more I think about it, it might not just be, like, super weird. There's probably something that's very similar to it in Dota or other kind of games. But with my League of Legends experience, yeah, like, nothing plays like that. Just wanted to add that little bit at the end.